hello also in last video we saw why and how we can implement incremental load using IICS mapping and this was the mapping which we have created let's do a quick recap of what we did in last video so in order to implement incremental load we just added a sub query in our source so if I go back so this was the source sub query and basically how we are identifying if a particular record got updated or newly created so that is based on updated on and created on column and we are fetching only those records after the last successful execution date and that's the reason why we created this extra table so if I go back uh, DW job run so if I query this table what this table holds is the mapping and how many times that mapping got executed and on the basis of the last successful execution we are filtering only recent created and recent updated records all right now in this video we'll try to implement same incremental load but with different strategy what i meant is so let's go back to our mapping i don't want to change the existing mapping so what i will do i will copy this mapping uh, copy and I will rename the new copied mapping rename and so in this video we'll see how can we implement the same incremental load strategy with mapping variable so in prior video we saw how can we implement using uh, sub query and uh, saving all those uh, mapping runtime information in a separate table if you want to avoid that there is another way like using mapping variable so using map variable okay what I will do is let me open that mapping and as I said we really don't need the second pipeline so I will just get rid of it what we need is we need to create a mapping variable so how can we create a mapping variable so click on this and go to parameter panel and here we will see in out parameter so in parameter is a, a parameter itself the actual parameter in out parameter means it's a variable you can change the uh, so what I will do you can change the value of that so I will give this as a variable name and I will define that as a date time because we are going to store the last execution time of a particular mapping it's the same concept only key thing is instead of storing that last execution day for date of a particular map run in a database we'll be storing that in a mapping variable so I will store it here and what I will do is I will go back I won't change the source qualifier query only thing is instead of this because as I said will not be storing that session runtime or map runtime in a separate table instead will be storing that in a variable okay validate so by default when we don't give uh, so this variable is not set yet so there is a still a default date time so if I give a preview it will give me all the records Okay, because default date for a mapping variable would be 1975 or something okay very old date so that's the reason why it's giving me all the records what I will do is before I run I will save it and let me go back and truncate my target table so I'm having these many records so let me truncate it okay so I won't have any records in dimension table what I will do is now uh, we'll also create a mapping task we just don't want to uh, run mapping here let's go ahead and create the mapping task mapping task uh, incremental load oops incremental load using map variable runtime environment on prime uh, cone 
next so as you can see right now there is no value because we never ran this mapping that that's the reason why oh one thing i forgot you know uh let me cancel it we haven't assigned the value to that variable okay so i have just created the variable but we have to assign the value to that variable so if i go back so the aggregation type is max okay i have defined this variable but i never so when my mapping gets finished i also need to assign the value to that variable so what i will do for that uh, maybe i will create an expression and let's say i will first create a variable v underscore let's say this guy then it's a date time configure and what I will do system very not system variables uh, built-in functions and I will have to use set max variable so in order to set the variable mapping variable value you'll have to use a set max variable function so it based on what aggregation you are using so I am using max so that's the reason why I'm using set max variable here my variable will go so I will go and create parameters in out this guy and what value we have to assign we have to assign the date time since date time validate perfect and I will also create one out variable o underscore let's say this guy it's a date time and what I will do is I will assign this guy so far so good and one last thing I will create a dummy expression and I will pass that out parameter to this dummy expression so if I go to incoming mapping I will have this out parameter so this is fine let me just quickly check the target table there is no change in this field mapping this is all good perfect I will save it so basically what we are doing is in expression itself in a, in same pipeline under expression we are assigning a current date to the mapping variable which we have created so when that mapping will run my mapping variable will have a current date value we'll see that so I will save this guy and I will also as I said we'll go ahead and create a mapping task so we'll uh, new mapping task task param incremental load using mapping variable perfect on prim runtime environment next uh, I don't have any default value right now because it never ran uh, I will use verbose mode and I guess that's all perfect now let's execute it I don't have any records in my target table and also the mapping variable has a default value which is something 1975 so that means if it executes it will always pull all the records 107 records we'll see that okay let's see I hope it won't fail okay it pulled 107 records let's go ahead and validate okay it does have 107 records okay now if I open download let's see the session log and now let's scroll down and validate the SQL query Now if you look at this SQL query, right, this is my select query and it says 19, 1753. I'm sorry, I said 1970, it's 1753, it's a default date. Okay, but now since my mapping ran and we added the logic, uh, the assignment logic, we are assigning the current time to that mapping variable. Let's go back to our mapping. And if I scroll down here, you see my mapping variable has the current date. 
now if I restart the mapping task what it will do is in my let me go back to that uh, let me go to downloads so basically now how my select statement if I run my very if I run my mapping task again Here is my select query. All right, this guy. Let me take it separately. So if I run my mapping again, this will have my current date. So if I go back to, this is the date, right? So it will have this date. Now, since there are no recently updated or recently created records, if I run this guy, it won't give me any records. So let's try that. See, it won't give me. So ideally, if I run my mapping now, it should not give me any single record. It should not fetch any single record. So let's validate that. Refresh. See, zero rows faced and zero errors. Nothing got inserted. So if I download, let's say select. See, it's an exact query, right? So if I go back, this is an exact incremental load query. All right, now let's purposely update some value. So what I will do, I will update the same SQL. So let, let's validate what value we have in employee dimension table. Uh, so for 171, the salary is 10, right? So let me update that to 8,000 or 7,400. Okay, and I'm updating this updated on column as well. Perfect. And so this $10 should get updated at 7,400. And at the same time, now if I go back to my select query so this is the query it will create because this is the mapping variable value if i run this guy i should get this one record so let me go back and restart perfect it gave me one record now let's uh, let's go back and check whether it's really got updated 7400 and now let's validate the session logs as well yeah perfect now the mapping variable value should should be out of after this uh, 1458 right so let's scroll down see 1520 now if I run this again it won't fetch any record so let me go back it will not give me any records it will fetch zero records all right so this is how we can implement incremental load using mapping variable as well all right now in next video we'll see there is another way we can implement that so we'll see that way as well all right thank you for watching this video and see you in the next video